Hey, welcome to Jimmy D's RC and thanks for stopping by. So it's been a long time since we've been in the workshop and uh, got my hot little hands on an OMP Hobby 49 inch Bighorn. I've been waiting a little while to pull this one out of the box. You know, just had Christmas uh, come and gone here. So uh, it's been a bit of a busy time. Uh, we are New Year's Eve tomorrow. So uh, I got a bit of free time on my hands in this kind of you know, no man's land between Christmas and New Year's, so I thought I would give unboxing the big horn a go. So, without further ado, as usual, let's get to it. Initial impressions, it's a heavier box than I thought it would be. I've got a couple of mates with big horns, um, and so I know they're not a very heavy aeroplane. Significantly well packed, as with all OMP and AJ products that come out of that factory. We got craft wood on the outside of that box, and it looks like it's on the sides, bottom and top as well. And I'm sure then there's going to be craft wood on the other end. So again, just as well protected as all the other OMP products are, uh, which is appropriate, right? It's a little bit easier when you have a hand, but. Uh, Everybody's off celebrating, so uh, it looks like it's just me tonight. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, check it out. So, craft with the whole length, the whole length, three and four. That'll give me a bit of space so I can get it out. It looks like the box is upside down, but that's not a big deal. Easily remedied. And yeah, there's craft wood down the end there too, down the end of the box. So, uh, same reputation uh, that OMP has developed so far for uh, good packing. Good packing and good shipping so that your stuff doesn't come damaged. Okay, let's have a look. Now the box is quite light. There we go. I got the PNP version. I got the green. Very popular. I figured it'd be nice and bright against the blue sky or the gray, gray clouds. So that's what I went with. Short takeoff and landing OMP Hobby Bighorn, 49 inch as you can see, the green one, and uh, all the stats there, you can just zoom in on your own and have a read or go on to the OMP Hobby website. I want to say thank you to Figs from Knife Edge RC and thank you to Mabel from OMP Hobby for uh, supplying the Bighorn for this unboxing. Let's have a look. All right, see what we get in the box. Okay, so initially, Right away, just on the top of the box lid, we've got a decal sheet or a decal sheet. 49 OMP Ohio Model Products OMP Hobby Sunny Sky. We got the big horn there. I got the big horn there. <laughs> 49 and the uh, EOEO3 uh, EOLO power system they call it. So and then we got a couple of big horn decals. So we'll save those for the build and let's see what we've got in the box itself. So a couple of wings. That's appropriate. I'd be careful so I don't cut the tape uh, or cut the covering while I'm cutting the tape. OMP Hobby branded tape. Nice little touches like that make things pretty cool. All right. So we got the, uh, looks like the starboard wing. Everything's really taped together so it doesn't shift around in shipping. This attention to detail is something that other companies miss, you know. All right, I've got the empennage, at least the horizontal surfaces. All right, I've got a bit more knife out there. Okay, looks like I've got the port side wing. Okay, and that's all packed in a nice little tray like that. It makes it easy, really easy. We'll just put that aside. Here I've got another tray. On this side, not a lot going on. Not a lot going on. So, you know, if you I've built a couple of the AJ lasers as well, I also got those from the for the same group because they uh, they're built in the same uh, factory eh, out in China. And um, boy, they're really well built. But the AJ does take a lot more uh, a lot more putting together or assembly. Let's say there we go. We've got our undercarriage wheels already attached. And here, what do we have here? Let's have a look. What else do we have? Can we knock that out without damaging it? That's the key, eh? Hmm, it seems to be taped. 
maybe even blue. No, it's taped on. There we go. All right, looks like I've got my rudder there. And then uh, some hardware, push rods. Anything else? Nope, it's just all in the bag. Another tray. And then I've got my fuse. Fuse, motor attached. Again, really well taped down. I've got my propeller, I can see. Let's take a lot of care not to cut the covering when you're dealing with the balsa model. All right, see, they've used some double-sided stick for this foam. Really solidly packed in there. There we go. Get more, get more tape up the front. <laughs> All right, I can see where it's sticking right there. Slice the plastic bag. There we go. And I've got a propeller and an inanimate carbon rod. Prop, a couple of decals, and a carbon star. Alright, that's better. Really well packed. I think it's going to take me longer to unpack the thing than it will, to, it will take to put it together, depending on if I use 5 or 30 minute epoxy for the empennage there. Um, so there we go, that's what you get in the box. Shall we pull it out of the plastic and get a closer look at everything? We'll save the fuse for last. So yeah, we'll move those trays down and we'll save the fuse for last. Let's start with the tail feathers. All right, looks like it's a, um, so it's not a pre-hinged uh, rudder. Hinges are placed in there, but I wouldn't say that they're glued in. They weren't for the AJ airplanes. Nor, I don't remember if they were or not for the Super Decathlon. That is, of course, an OMP hobby Super Decathlon you see up there. Also comes in uh, green now. So, nice airplane. Uh, RC Gus uh, put a link in the description to his channel. He just got himself one of those ones in green. Said he's going to bring it to the club tomorrow, so pretty interested. Hopefully we'll get this up and running by tomorrow. We can have a fly and... Uh, he can have a fly with his Super Decathlon. Okay, it looks like these are C8'd in on the one side. So those, I'm giving it a solid pull. And uh, those are in. Those are already glued in to the rudder. But of course, if you're going to buy the kit, double check, man. Because that would be that would suck, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, Jimmy D said they were fine. And they don't turn out fine. So, always a good idea. But if you're a modeler, I don't have to tell you that. I'm telling you stuff you already know. Alright, all good. Nice. In the bin. What's this? A little hardware kit. It's not a lot of hardware involved. Just a few push rods by the looks of it and some double-sided, or sorry, uh, adhesive-backed uh, Velcro. I guess that's for my battery. I tend to use shelf liner, not uh, Velcro for my batteries anyway, because I find it's, it's easier. I just strap them down good and tight. And uh, that's the way I do it. And I've got some servo trays by the looks of it. A couple of servo trays, a couple of push rods, screws, and washers. All right, and then here I've got my spar. Don't cut yourself. I need scissors for that. It's be easier. Oh, there we go. There she comes. Get rid of the plastic. Got my Sunny Sky propeller, yellow. These sound wild. They're so cool when you really rev it up. I find uh, on uh, my buddy RC Gus's big horn, and then also on the Decathlon. Very cool prop. There we go. Comes with some decals, Sunny Sky decals as well. Put those with the other ones. And there's your propeller. And this is a 12 by 6, six and a half. 
12 inch by six and a half. Uh, coarseness, I guess you'd call it. All right, let's do the empennage. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at that. So well covered. The covering job is just sublime. Uh, I've mentioned this a few times on different unboxing videos with OMP stuff and AJ stuff. I could never do a covering job like this. I mean, gee, uh, you know, and I covered, oh gee, started with my, um, God, my Eagle, my Eagle 2. I forget, uh, that was a Carl Goldberg, I think. I had an Eagle 2, then I had a Tiger 2. I did another Eagle 2 for, um, uh, another guy, uh, an older guy at the flying field. I built it for him and covered it for him. And then I built uh, some kind of flying boat. I don't even remember what it was called. It was for the same guy. I didn't, I didn't build it um, or I didn't fly it, but I built the thing for him and I covered that for him as well. And then I had a tiger and I did covering on all that stuff. And then I got that uh, Spitfire that's on the, on, the, on the channel. You can see that earlier in early days of the channel. Um, where you see me doing the covering. So I've done a, a fair amount of covering, not a whole heap, but a fair amount. So it's at about five, that's a two, three, uh, four, five airplanes, yeah. And, uh, and countless repairs as well. I couldn't cover like that. There's just something about how they get their, their edges, you know, their leading edge, and just the overlap around the side and their corners are just so precise. And mine were always a little wrinkly and a little, uh, you know, the lines were a bit wobbly. So I don't know if they have special tools or jigs or what, or they're just really good at it because they do so many of them. But um, better than I could ever do, that's for sure. There we go. I've got my starboard wing. Big, huge aileron surface. Big, huge flap surface. Pre-hinged. Nice and solid. Giving it a good solid tug. That's gorgeous. Alright. Take off this. We'll have a look at the servos and control horns. There we go. So this is an OMP hobby. It looks like an S65. SG5 servo. There's a number there, but I don't have my glasses, so I can't read it. Um, yeah, took the... <laughs> I took the plunge, I went to the optometrist just before Christmas, and he said, guess what you need? Reading glasses, my son. I said, why are you calling me son? You're 20 years younger than me. Anyway, there we go. And we got, it uh, looks like a nylon. Yeah, wing stays there. Looks like an aluminum pin. I've got my, they pre-run my cables for my aileron and my flap. And I've got a nylon screw to hold the wing on. But, uh, you know, I mean, with the, the Cathlon, I never take the wings off. I don't suspect I'll ever take the wings off with this. And you got to plug in servos, unplug servos, you know, I don't... It's a bit of a pain with my Warbirds, which I do have to take the wings off of to transport that are a bit bigger. Anything bigger than 1,500 mils won't fit in my car um, without the wings off. So uh, it'll be nice to have another smaller plane, a 49, and can just, you know, pop it in the back and uh, make sure I've, it's not going to roll around on me and then away I go to the flying field. It'll be nice to have something that can do anything. Short field takeoff and landing, capable, you know, point it where you want it to go, apply power and it goes there. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to, to get this big horn in the air. I've been looking at them since they started to advertise them two years ago um, and finally, uh, finally got my hands on one. So yeah, pretty cool. Being a fan of Warbirds, it's, um, you know, I tend to hesitate to buy anything that, that isn't either scale or, you know, World War II era. Alright, same on this side. Again, beautiful covering job. Yeah, SG5 servo for aileron. I didn't check, is that the same? Yeah, that's the same servo for the flap as well. All right, and we've got our control horns pre-installed. I didn't mention that before, nice and solid. And they've covered right into the hinge, very clean covering job, right into the hinge and around the uh, inboard side of the flap, of the outboard, sorry, inboard side of the aileron, outboard side of the flap, outboard side of the aileron, 
and board side of the flap. It's all just so nicely done. Attention to detail is great. Um, this looks like that's going to be a ball, uh, a ball linkage. Yep, ball linkages for ailerons and for the servo arms as well and flaps. Everything's balls. Everything's ball linkages. And wheels on the carriage down and locked. Mm. Feels like that's just aluminium. That's good. If it bends, I can bend it back easily. Not very thick. But uh, I know Gus hasn't had a problem with his, RC Gus. All right, I might just get the scissors out and cut that so I don't slice my fingers. much easier. Beauty. Ah, there she is. Pre-installed. I don't know if they put any long sight on this. I might pull those and have a look. The the undercarriage is quite firm. I don't know what kind of give that's going to have. Of course, it's a bit sprung. I'm going to have to make my first bunch of landings very soft. We'll see. That is a tall order nowadays, though. I'm, uh, I'm a bit out of practice. I haven't been to the field a lot. Just life happening, you know? So, nice to be uh, doing this right around Christmas time when I've got some time to breathe. So right away I see some of the pin striping. The tape is pulling it off, so I'm gonna I'm gonna revisit the pin striping here with my iron before I um, I go flying with it and make sure uh, it's well and truly attached because I don't want that coming off while I'm in the air. Ah, there she is. Hello. And welcome to the field. Okay, spinner's on nice and loose. That's good, so I can get my prop on. It looks like I've got my two servos for my tail surfaces already attached and ready to go. Fabulous. Here I've got my hatch. Now the hatch does blow off the decathlon a fair amount, so I've lost two hatches on that, those decathlons. Um, that was before they installed, I think they've got a, um, like a latch now to keep it solid rather than just the magnets. Um, Gus doesn't have a problem with his blowing off uh, because he, you got this vent on the uh, Bighorn, whereas the Super Decathlon doesn't have the vent. Uh, but I have cut it in, as you can see, I've cut one in there. Um, not quite enough, and so you also are recommended to burn out these two holes up the back, and it's still not quite enough. On really aggressive, uh, negative um, kind of torque and gyro maneuvers, like uh, going for like an inverted spin uh, into like a, a knife edge spin, the, I have lost the top hatch, so I just put epoxy around the edge of it because it may, just makes it easier to pull the wings off and because I don't pull the wings off it's not a big deal just leaving it there epoxy back up she goes there we are all right let's have a look and have a feel yeah just glue just um, magnets here so I think I'm probably gonna do the same thing I'm probably gonna epoxy that one on so it doesn't come flying off 
with all the crazy maneuvers I'm going to do. Really well appointed, as with all OMP Hobby and AJ aeroplanes on the inside. Everything's already pre-run. We've got that uh, tube on the inside where your, uh, your elevator and rudder servo cable are already attached. ESC is already in there, motor's already in there. Uh, I, don't, I can't read what motor it is. We'll check this, the specs on the website. I'm sure it's all there if you're interested in it. But uh, hey, pretty happy with this. I, so we'll see about putting her together next. Um, I don't know, it doesn't look too much more like it's, uh, there's actually less to this than there was with the decathlon where you had to get those struts bent up and screwed in just right and all, a lot more loctiting I think with all the screws there. So uh, we'll see how we go with this one. Uh, uh, I expect it should be together in maybe an hour at most. So pretty excited about it. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Please uh, click subscribe and like if uh, you enjoyed what you saw today and uh, stay tuned to the channel. We'll be uh, showing you this girl uh, on its maiden in the next couple of days. Thanks very much. All the best. Take care.